My name is Laszlo Tabar, and I would very much like to give a talk about the need for multimodality approach screening women with dense breast. You will see, and of course, from your own experience, you may know what a problem we have. First of all, all of us want to decrease mortality from breast cancer. That's our ultimate goal. But the task is enormously complex and difficult. We should, however, keep in mind Professor Blake Hades' very smart sentence, early detection of breast cancer and treatment in early phase is the most important control mechanism for breast cancer ever, breast cancer death ever invented. There are numerous difficulties, however. It's not just like, let's go out and do it. And today we only have time to talk about the heterogeneity of the normal breast structure. Isn't that interesting that unlike any other organs, the breast have five structurally normal, structurally different parenchymal patterns. Now the bones or the lungs don't have it. The breasts have it. And that's the first obstacle, the problem. It certainly is not at all a problem to find a baby cancer. Measuring a few millimeter in size, if it's totally fatty replaced breast. But try to find the already palpable carcinoma in this dense breast. Yes, indeed, there is a carcinoma here, seen very well by that radar we call ultrasound. And when your pathologist provides the large section histopathology image, then you see the great correlation between ultrasound and large format thick sec thin section histology, but the mammogram doesn't show it. Or in another case, you see very subtle contour change. Nevertheless, this is caused by a tiny carcinoma that is very well seen on automated breast ultrasound. And of course, here is the corresponding histology. Dear colleagues, some of the cases are really scary. And let me show you the mammograms of this 53 year old woman who came to screening. Poor radiologists were exposed to view this very dense tissue on the MLO and the CC projections. Now, mind you, this patient has a 10 centimeter carcinoma. Difficult to say whether it is in the right or the left breast. And there are two options. Both of them should be used. One of them is artificial intelligence that immediately calls your attention on the presence of a pathologic lesion, but it's much simpler to perform ultrasound examination, preferably automated breast ultrasound examination. Yes, already at this time, the artificial intelligence is telling us that there is a hotspot there, but look how simple it is on the automated breast ultrasound. Now, is this a diffuse or multifocal or a combination of the two? And the mammogram is not positive. This is the handheld ultrasound, and this is the automated breast ultrasound. And this is the sad thing, the same case, showing this very extensive carcinoma on MR. And if I put the mammogram beside it, this one, you just 
don't see it. But it's very well visible on ultrasound and very well visible on MR. And of course, it's very well visible on automated breast ultrasound. So this woman could have had her breast cancer diagnosed and treated years before it actually happened. And it's an unfortunate case because it's poorly differentiated, very aggressive. And there is another unfortunate moment in this case, namely the neoadjuvant treatment did not work. Here is the large section histopathology. And I would very much like you to tell your pathologist that we are in the 21st century, this chopped onion type, tiny histopathology technique should belong to the past. Because then we can really compare this one, the large thin section, four micron. And later on, I'm going to show you large thick section, 1500 micron histopathology, which can be compared with a mammogram, ultrasound, and MR. Well, what I wanted to say that there were very many unfortunate events in this case. She went through the torture of chemotherapy, but the cancer cells were not killed. This carcinoma was not sensitive to chemotherapy. So dear colleagues, this is something I could have started my lecture with if you squint then there is a very important message here. Mammography is a visual art. And of course, if we are very good in looking at the details, by adding another method and the other method, then we are going to see the building blocks of these pictures. And you understand that the text is hide and seek. And then you see that the building blocks are actually Indian horses painted by the ingenious artist Beverly Doolittle. So this is the message. Whether you are reading a mammogram, ultrasound, or any other imaging methods, contrast enhanced mammography, MR, anything, the radiologist knowledge has to be based on 3D large format, thick section histopathology. What does that mean? This is what that means. And this, what I'm talking about now is really valid mammography, ultrasound, automated breast ultrasound, MR, anything. Dear colleagues, when we do not look at the cellular details of the mammogram, the histopathology, but we are looking at the structure, then we find four basic building blocks that is going to be the foundation of your knowledge, whether you look at a mammogram or a bus or anything. That is, here is the terminal duct, and here are these 50 fingers we call asinoi. Asinoi, just like your hand having 50 fingers. And then your radiologist, you put an X-ray tube above it, and then you get the mammogram. Now, mind you, even if it's 50 or 60 fingers, the size is just one and a half to two millimeter. This is the place where the milk was produced one day. But unfortunately, 75% of all breast cancers originate from here. So here comes the X-ray and the X-ray images this terminal ductal lobular unit. And so what do you see on the mammogram? A one and a half, two millimeter sized nodular oval shaped density. Dear colleagues, this is the most important number one 
basic building block. But how come that I can distinguish one from another and from another? Because there is another one, our friend, another basic building block, and it's called adipose tissue. While the TDLU is radio opaque, this is radio lucent. And of course, your fingers might have 120. The number of your fingers can be 120. In that case, the terminal ductal lobular units are larger. Well, that's no problem. That's what we call adenosis. So we have managed one and two basic building blocks. And what is this? Well, this is the major lactiferous duct. And once, upon, once again, the X-ray is going to make it visible as linear densities and separated by fat, linear uh, radiolucent areas. So that would be basic building block number three. And then comes the trouble. We can handle one, two, and three basic building blocks. But both you and me look like this when the fourth one, fibrosis, comes into the picture. Why? Because it hides the TDLUs, it hides the ducts, and unfortunately, it hides the cancer. Either I see only the tip of the tumor, and you have to be an extremely good mammographer to be able to find it sticking out here. This is the same thing. Or there is no radiologist on earth who can find this cancer totally hidden within the fibrous connective tissue. Sometimes we are skillful in finding the whiskers that is the tip of the iceberg, but here is the iceberg. And here are the speculations. Now you know the four basic building blocks, and I wish that every one of you had this collage in front of you when you are reading mammograms, because then you would understand that when you look at nodular densities, then you actually think about histopathology. And that marks a good radiologist. Yes, I look at the black and white, but I see 3D histopathology. The ducts, the terminal ductal lobular units, the yellow background, the fibrosis, and so on. So by knowing these four basic building blocks, you gained another knowledge, namely, you can understand histopathology. Did I talk about cells? No, I'm not going to talk about cells because we radiologists do not see cells on the mammogram, MR, or an ultrasound. So talking with the pathologists is very difficult because they only talk about cells which you never see. So let's turn the page and let's talk about structure. Yes, this is the duct basic building block number two. This is one terminal ductal lobular unit, and this is another one. Somewhat smaller, somewhat larger, that's fine. And then the surrounding yellow fibrosis, which we certainly dislike, and the adipose tissue, which we very much like, four basic building blocks. Dear colleagues, voila, here is a success story. You can read a mammogram. Why? Because somebody asks you, what is this linear density? And then you say, well, that's a major lactiferous duct. And what is this nodular density, small beans, pea-sized nodular density? Those are the terminal ductal lobular units. And here is the CC projection, 
and I know that I can read a mammogram or ultrasound, as you will see, because this is how I'm thinking. This linear density is this, the duct. These nodular densities are the terminal ductal lobular units. And then when you are sitting behind the multi-headed microscope together with the colleague, the pathologist, you can easily say, I know what this is. It's white, that's the adipose tissue. I know what this ugly red is. That's the fibrosis, don't like it. And I know that this is a cross section of a pleated duct. And I know that these are the terminal ductal lobular units, the milk factory. But of course we are radiologists, but of course we radiologists like the 3D picture better. You see the terminal duct and you see the lobule. So, isn't this a beautiful organ? Now you can account for adipose tissue, fibrosis, different sized terminal ductal lobular units and ducts here and there. I wonder whether you hear the music, but this is when I'm moving the 3D histopathology image under the microscope and please relate to this one. One terminal ductal lobular is here. The other one is here. So this is the foundation of your knowledge. And most of the most of the mammograms show normal fibroglandular tissue. I know exactly what's going on. It's unequivocal and I can make the diagnosis. No wonder that I can also compare with flowers, plants, this being the major lactiferous duct, like the trunk of the tree. And the tree has its branches and the major lactiferous duct has its branches. Women don't need that many ducts. Women need a lot of terminal ductal lobular units and the tree doesn't need many branches, but many leaves. So somebody asks you a question, what would this be? Then your answer is very simple. And so you see these linear densities and the fat in between, and that's going to be the duct. Now, when I put all these four basic building blocks together, then we understand the normal breast structure, the patterns. There are five. Yes, the birads, all due respect to it, has four, but that's a quantitative analysis. You don't need to go to medical school to say 75%, 50%, 25% density. No, we have a qualitative analysis, which means we compare the black and white with the underlying histology like this. This gives me the pattern one and its variations. And that's the most frequently occurring dense breast parenchyma, which however, during the years is going to lose its TDLUs and becomes pattern two and pattern three. So as you see, they decrease during the years. And then she becomes pregnant. Or she takes HRT, hormone replacement therapy. Then the TDLUs come back. 
pregnancy and lactation is over, then it goes in this direction again. The most dynamic mammographic parenchymal pattern. Now the real arch enemy is the pattern number four and the pattern number five, because you and me can miss a small carcinoma. And please keep in mind that pattern four never changes. About 12% of the population has it. Pattern five is about five to 8%. This is 12%. Altogether, this is going to be about 20% of the women, whatever age, they are going to have dense fibroglandular tissue, even if they are 100 years old. Here we go. That is the four basic building blocks, the nodular densities, linear densities, concave contoured fibrosis, and fat, about equal amount, that gives pattern one. And then the winter time is when the TDLUs are gone and adipose tissue dominates. Pattern three is when there are these linear densities up to 25% of the mammogram and otherwise fatty replaced. Pattern four is the adenosis pattern, high risk pattern. And pattern five is really a joker. We don't know what's hiding here. Can be total atrophy, can be viable TDLUs. And you see people talk about the risk and I don't trust that very much because a woman with low risk is going to catch up with the woman with high risk, but it takes 15 years. At this time point, there is a significant difference between a high risk and low risk, but this blue becomes high risk 15 years later. We talked, we wrote about this. If you have this book, we have 1600 pictures and 150 pages we were writing about these mammographic parenchymal patterns. Dear colleagues, there is one more thing I must tell you before we go to discussing the multimodality approach. This is what we were talking about, the basic building blocks. The other one we have to talk about where the cancer originates from, that is the site of origin of the breast cancer. And here we go again. I mentioned to you that 75% comes from here. 20% originates from the major, major loctiferous ducts and from the background fibrosis and its stem cells, about 5% of the cancers. Let's look at it. Yes, at this time point, you really understand that this is the terminal ductal lobular unit. So we have to distinguish the cancers originating from the terminal ductal lobular unit. And there are two options. It's either a circular oval shaped, ill-defined, or stellate central tumor mass and straight speculations. Of course, your pathologist is going to call it invasive ductal carcinoma, but pathologists all over the world are wrong. This is not a duct. This is a terminal ductal lobular unit. So it's actually originating from these SNI, which means we should call them SNR adenocarcinoma of the breast. And in situ stage is when they are either crushed stone-like or powdery calcifications. And the pathologists once again call it the DCIS. Please never use this word in your life. This is a carcinoma in situ, but originating from the asinine. 
cancer in situ originating from the terminal ductal lobular unit is not ductal carcinoma in situ. We have a lot of problem with the pathologists. Second, when the cancer originates from the major lactiferrous duct, you see there are too many side branches and pathologists again call it DCIS, but the problem is that 30% of the women with this picture die from this disease. Once again, it's not a DCIS, it's duct forming invasive carcinoma. The cancer cells penetrate the basement membrane and produce side branches. But right now in this lecture, we don't talk about this because this is not a topic of ultrasound. However, here is another problem. The yellow background has the stem cells and those stem cells one day become epithelial cells, mesenchymal epithelial transition. And that results in something every radiologist fears, this spider's web-like architectural distortion. The main feature of this is an extreme proliferation of the connective tissue. Of course, the pathologists are talking about Indian files. That's not the point. The point really is that there is an enormous overproduction, excess amount of fibrous tissue, and you radiologists are fooled and are going to miss a 10 centimeter carcinoma because it's concave, because it originates from the very bases, the structure of the breast. And this is not curable. This is a stem cell carcinoma, and this is a stem cell carcinoma. Do you want to find breast cancer early? Focus on finding stellate and circular lesions when they are small. Therapy doesn't cure these, and we cannot find it early. Fortunately, it's only 25% of all cancers. This is what they look like. The stellate lesion originates from the TDLU, the circular from the TDLU, and the powdery calcifications and the pleomorphic calcifications. So, cancers originating from the TDLU have four imaging biomarkers. This, 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 and that. Cancers originating from the major lactiferrous duct have six. Cancers originating from the mesenchyme have only one. You can read it, you can learn it very quickly. And then you say, I don't like this because the mammogram is negative, but the ultrasound is going to be the king because the ultrasound beam is stopped by the excess amount of fibrous tissue. Here are the imaging biomarkers of this one, the fingers, the acini, stellate lesion, circular lesion, cross stone like calcification, powdery calcifications. Dear colleagues, this is the success story of mammography screening, because when your patients are coming with a palpable three to five centimeter carcinoma, her long-term outcome is this. But because we, with the help of screening, found these baby cancers that is smaller than 15 millimeter, then their long-term survival is well over 90%. We should not talk much about the six um, subtypes or mammographic presentations of the ductal carcinoma originating from the major lactiferous ducts, that is this long casting type calcification, snake skin-like, skipping stone and pearl necklace-like calcifications, or bloody nipple discharge galactography or architectural distortion, because that's not a story of today's lecture. 
The sad thing is that while this is the success story of screening, this one we cannot control. And even worse, this one, can you imagine that you just gave a well letter to the patient, but she has a 10 centimeter carcinoma. Now that is originating from the mesenchyme and that's why it's concave. Look at how deceptive it is. Everything you see here is carcinoma. And it kills. About 40% of the patients die just like this. This is a stem cell cancer. This is a stem cell cancer. Sad story. But that's why industry gave us all the tools, the mammograms, tomosynthesis, handheld ultrasound, preoperative needling, fine needle aspiration, core biopsy, stereo biopsy, MR. And the topic of today is the new kid in the block, automated breast ultrasound. And so I agree with my friend and student, Dr. Connie Jones, we have never been in a better position in the entire history of medicine to deliver life-saving breast imaging services with such a high level of quality we can today. Let's talk about these black sheep in the family, pattern one, pattern four, and pattern five. What's the problem? Problem is that you miss, I miss, baby cancers hidden in the dense tissue. How are we going to solve the problem? Well, it has to be ultrasound. In screening large population, you cannot do handheld ultrasound. It has to be automated. And that's called automated breast ultrasound. Unfortunately, we called it ultrasound, we should have called it sonographic CT. And mind you, we are not interested in examining with ultrasound the fatty portion. We only want to examine the dense portion. And so here are the benefits and the problems with handheld ultrasound. It's a perfect tool in assisting in differential diagnosis, but it's operator dependent and there is poor standardization. So it has to be automated. And here is the tool. Beautiful design. First of all, it's important that it's user-friendly and it's patient-friendly. Women don't like to go for a mammogram because they are squeezed from the side that's unpleasant, but they accept a compression against the chest wall. And here we are. You see, ultrasound examination, ultrasound altogether likes to go through a thin tissue. And to flatten out the fibroglandular tissue, we do things, we do two things. She's lying supine, which makes the fibroglandular tissue thinner. And the second is that we are compressing. And that's what ultrasound likes. And here it is. It's automated because the 14 centimeter probe is running inside the plate. Takes about 45 seconds per acquisition. And then it produces these reconstructed two millimeter thick cards. And of course you don't play cards this way, you place them out. Two millimeter, four millimeter, six millimeter deep to the skin. Why two millimeter? Do you know why? Because this is a copy of the color three-dimensional histology, where one TDLU measures less than two millimeter. Fantastic. You know, the conventional ultrasound slices 300 times 
while the coronal section gives you one slice. Just imagine reading a book, like a children's book with two millimeter thick pages. Page after page after page. So here is the, the breast in the supine position. We are not imaging the whole breast, but the fibroglandular tissue. So the question is, how thick is the fibroglandular tissue after she is in supine and after I compress it? Well, varies from individual to individual, but slice it by two millimeters. Should we say 20 millimeter? That's 10 pages in a book. And because the technologies are going to give you a right lateral, right AP, and right medial acquisition. That's three books to read per breast. That's 10 pages, and that's 10 pages, and 10 pages, and it can be 20. And then you come with the left breast. So it's 60 pages you have to page through. Not too many physicians would be patient in doing it. I have a solution for that. So here is the book to read. And now our knowledge about the basic building block come very handy. Why? Because, dear colleagues, this is not a mammogram. This is the coronal section, two millimeter thick, coronal section of the breast with ultrasound. That's automated breast ultrasound. I can see the TDIs, I can see the fat, and I can see ducts. Isn't that fantastic? You can hardly make a distinction which one is the mammogram and which one is ultrasound. That's the ingenious in the 3D automated ultrasound. I can see the TDLUs. And now I'm hiding a, let's say, 10 millimeter cyst. What do you think? What would that look like? First of all, this is fibroglandular tissue, but this is going to punch a hole a hole in my book. Oops. There is a hole in my book. That is, I page and page and page. And I find a hole on the histology and its reflection here on the ABUS. It's like a barrel. Smaller, larger, ever increasing and ever decreasing size of the holes. You see that? And here are they, multiple holes. And then you call her back because screening is not diagnosis. And then you get the confirmation and here is the histology. These are simple cysts. But what if a cancer makes a hole in my book? 10 millimeter. I just missed it on the mammogram. And I can see it once, twice, three, four times. Why? Because it's two millimeter and two millimeter and two millimeter, 10 millimeter divided by two. I'm going to see it four or five times. Isn't that beautiful? And here it is. Here is the skin. And then we go two millimeter deeper, two millimeter deeper, two millimeter deeper. And suddenly, where there was no hole, a hole starts to come up and it's getting larger. And it actually has a baby beside it. Satellite, two cancers. Let's look at a case. I'm sure you are very good radiologists. You can read a mammogram. But when you come to work, you say, this is not fair. I have to read this mammogram. And let me show it to you again. 
Dear colleagues, can you find that 22 millimeter carcinoma here? Just tell me, white or light, right or left? Well, nine out of 10 radiologists miss the carcinoma and that's not fair. So there are two solutions and not either or, but the combination. One of them is automated breast ultrasound because this is mission impossible to see through. The other one is going to be the AI, or artificial intelligence. So where is the cancer? Let's ask artificial intelligence first. And it says, look here, there is a carcinoma. You just missed it. And what about automated breast ultrasound? Piece of cake. Really no problem. Here's the black hole. And it's actually here. Did we talk about iceberg phenomenon? Dear colleagues, the carcinoma is entirely hidden here. And it's up here. Let me magnify it. Yes, indeed. And here is a solution. There will be a CAD, computer-aided detection. Of course, any radiologist could find this. But there is a so-called artificial intelligence for ultrasound, and it's called CAD, company QView. Of course, MR can show it. Handheld ultrasound can show it. But in screening, first of all, you have to call her back. So in this case, mammography screening, in this particular case, failed. Automated breast ultrasound succeeded to find this carcinoma while it was still localized to the breast. Axillary and lymph nodes were not positive. Do you see here the carcinoma? Here is the carcinoma and only these speculations are shooting out. Here is the mammogram. Here's automated breast ultrasound, MR. Very telling. Problem, dense breast. Solution, automated breast ultrasound. And it's non negative. Fortunately, more cases. I don't think you can point out a carcinoma here, but there is one. Here is the automated ultrasound. Here is the iceberg phenomenon. Just a tip is seen here. Same case, this evil fibrosis hides most of the cancer. Just this part is shown. This is what I showed you earlier. Most of the carcinoma, like an iceberg, is hidden right here. This is the thin four micron and this is the thick 1500 micron histopathology. Dear colleagues, this is modern breast imaging, ask your pathologist, they must use at least mega cassette, if not very large, eight by 10 centimeter histopathology slice. And comes the troublemaker, the architectural distortion, which is not a lump, it's a thickening. Mesenchymal stem cells undergo complex process. Where? Well, it's all over. You see, this is basic building block number four. Fibrosis, concave, right? This is normal, but this is not. What's the difference? Enormous amount of red stuff, and that's what we don't like. That is overproduction of the fibrous mesenchymal tissue. And that causes this kind of a problem. All this 
is carcinoma. Easily seen on automated breast ultrasound and easily missed, even if it's 10 centimeters on the mammogram, because the AAB, the ossinoradenocarcinoma of the breast, when it's born, it's convex and it's getting bigger and bigger and it's convex, but this one is concave. This one originates from the gland. This one originates from the mesenchyme. Everything you see here is carcinoma, even the tiniest fine line, just like you see on the 3D comparison. Every bit is a carcinoma and you have to find it. Try. 30 months before treatment, here is her medial lateral oblique projection. I'm closing the lecture pretty soon. I don't think you find any abnormality. Then two years later, she has a 10 centimeter carcinoma, which press, right or left? If you say normal, then seven months later, seven months after this, although AI would have found it and ABUS, could find it. Here is, dear colleagues, a huge carcinoma, born big, all this is cancer. And the AI is correct, but of course, the ABUS is correct too. Very easy to find the architectural distortion. And of course, the handheld ultrasound shows how bad this disease is. But on the mammogram, nobody can find it. What is palpable? Here is the BB, the lead mark. And now you see the cutoff sign. And of course, all this is course, you know, very nicely shown on handheld ultrasound. Shown on MR as well. But I think in these cases, the automated breast ultrasound is better. Here you see the architectural distortion of mastectomy specimen, and this makes us very, very sad. It's concave. And it's concave on the 3D automated ultrasound. And it's all cancer and all cancer and very difficult to find. Large, thin section. It wraps itself around a normal duct. It's called targetoid pattern and tell your oncologist that they should not look at the immunohistochemical biomarkers because they fool them that this is a good cancer, but she has a 40% risk of dying from it. Sad story. Concave contours, surrounding fat is squeezed. Here is probably the solution architectural distortion and ABUS. And of, after that, of course, the MR is positive too. But this could be used as a screening tool. You see the architectural distortion here and the 3D automated ultrasound. We wrote books about this and I want to give you a present. Would you mind taking a screenshot about this? and put this into your browser. I'm going to give you 25 cases, the world's most unique collection. It's going to ask you about password. And of course you can hear about this in many of those 70 lectures we have on this website. And there are other books about this, and it should be spread. We wrote a 3D histopathology book about this evil disease. Eventually, we had to have scientific trials designed and carried out. I asked my friend, an ingenious British statistician, Dr. Professor Duffy, 
and he designed the following, and this could be and should be the future as soon as possible. The patient comes to your clinic and technologists are taking a mammogram and it's a factory place, which means pattern two and three. And she goes home and she doesn't need anything more. The physician is going to interpret the image. But if she comes with the pattern one, four and the five, then she definitely needs more than that. She needs automated breast ultrasound, not only mammography. And this trial has been carried out in two places, one in the United States, and here is the referenced literature. And it clearly showed that about 26% more cancers were found in addition to fulfilled digital mammography. Clearly showed that this is the future. Otherwise we have discriminating discrimination. Women with fatty replaced breast got a very good answer. Women with dense breast are risking of their cancers missed, should not be the case. And then the European trial carried out in Stockholm arrived at an even better result than the US trial. First of all, it proved that the callback rate did not increase. Mind you, this is not simple ultrasound. This is automated breast ultrasound. And also found 36% more cancers. So now we have the scientific evidence that fulfilled digital mammography should be combined with automated breast ultrasound in every patient. And that's about 40% of the female population in age groups 40 to 74. And then people would say, this costs money. No, it saves money. Here is the article, make a picture about it. Quite recently, last April, uh, it was published. Namely, it saves money. It says, it's an Italian author. It says that in case Italy introduced automated breast ultrasound, they could save 54 million euro a year. Yeah, colleagues, last slides. Yes, this is what you have to look at and look for when you page the book. Why don't we use the AI, namely, this is a different AI, namely AI for ultrasound. It's called QView. You open the workstation and it immediately marks doctor, here is the black hole, and then just call the patient back. And you call the patient back and then you get the cancer. Dear colleagues, I'm running out of time. I hope that you have a few questions. I'm just showing you multifocal carcinomas with the QView. And here is the end of my story. I hope that I gave you within reasonable time, very good overview of the complexity of the normal breast and the complexity of the very tricky disease we call breast cancer. There is no breast cancer. There is no DCIS. Breast cancer is a heterogeneous disease. DCIS is a heterogeneous disease and it's not originating from the ducts either. Let me hear your questions. Thanks very much for your attention.